Now, let's put this into a, in, in, into practice. I said that I was going to find the cosine of 5 pi twelfths. All right, cosine of 5 pi twelfths. All right, and what did I also say? I forget what I said. I also said what the sine of pi eighths. Sine of pi eighths. Now, we've got our rules over here, and I may be flashing back and forth here. Now, let's think about this. How am I going to be able, what is 5 pi twelfths? I have to write it as a sum of something in terms of sixths or fourths or whatever. Now, for me, this is always a fun little trick because I know I've got twelfths, all right? And I know that I can only play with pi sixths, pi fourths, pi halves, pi thirds. So I'm going to start thinking to myself here. I'm going to put a fourth here and a third here. Why? Because their product is twelfths. And these are terms that I know how to deal with, right? I know what they are. Remember, at the end of the day, when I use this formula, I'm going to use the cosine of alpha and the cosine of beta and the sine of alpha and the sine of beta. I'm just going to simply define this guy up here as alpha and this guy down here as beta. But I do have to think this through. Oh, let's see. If I simply did pi fourths plus pi thirds, that would give me, what, 7 pi twelfths? Hmm. Well, what can I do? What do you think? I need a 5. How can I build a 5? Can I do it with these two guys? All right. Well, I don't know. Let's play. How about pi fourths, right, minus 2 pi thirds? Does that work? That'll give me a 3 pi minus 8 pi. Ooh, 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 wait. 3 pi, right, if I find a common denominator, let's put that over here. I'll end up with 3 pi twelfths minus 8 pi twelfths. Hey, wait a sec. What is that? Th whoops, that's supposed to be 3, right? Look at that. That's a negative 5 pi twelfths. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, all I got to do is flip them. So I'm going to erase. Sometimes it's just trial and error. It's just playing with it. Some people are better at this than others, but a push me shove. You have to acknowledge that you're going to get a 2 pi thirds minus a pi fourths here. You've got to acknowledge that you're going to have a pi thirds and a pi fourths because their product, when you find that common denominator, uh, gives you five, gives you, I'm sorry, gives you twelfths, which is what we want. Now let's double check this. 8 pi, when I find my common denominator, I'll end up with 8 pi, pi twelfths, minus 3 pi twelfths, and look at that. That's nice. All right? That's pretty cool. And up with 5 pi twelfths. All right. Now, I'm just off to the races. I'm going to race this sign of pi a's because it's just going to be in my way. We'll, we'll deal with that one here in just a sec. All right. So what does that thing equal? Well, according to my formula, this is alpha and beta. This is going to give me cosine of 2 pi thirds times the cosine of pi fourths plus the sine of 2 pi thirds times the sine of pi fourths. Now I just go to my happy place and I remember my values. Well, the cosine of pi thirds is one half, but you know I've always got in the back of my, my head, all students take calculus, right? Two pi thirds is in the second quadrant, and cosine's negative over there, so the cosine of two pi thirds is going to be what? Negative a half. Well, that's cool. Negative one half times cosine of pi fourths. That's easy. That's a freebie. That's one of the fantastic fives, right? That's uh, root two over two, and then plus sine of two pi thirds. Now let's see what's sine of two pi thirds. Two pi thirds. That's the long one, right? So sine of pi thirds. What's sine of pi thirds? That's root three over two, and in the second quadrant, I'm positive in sine. So again, that's going to be root three over two, isn't it? The second quadrant. And then sine of pi fourths, ooh, the same thing. And I get root 2 halves. And this just turns into negative root 2 fourths plus root 6 fourths, effectively known as, if I want to clean it up, make it look pretty, uh, root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. So that takes care of that. Now, we're going to have to table the discussion about sine of pi eights until we have some more rules. But all I want to show you here is that we come up with these rules, we come up with these formulas to start filling in these gaps. We'll get to this in just a little bit. You'll enjoy that. All right. Now, I, I want to prove an identity real quickly here. And I want you to think about this in two ways. I want you to look at this identity. This is the cosine of pi halves minus theta. 
and this is going to equal sine of theta. Now, there's two ways I want you to think about this. Uh, similarly, we're going to do the sine of pi halves minus theta, and this is going to equal cosine of theta. These are called co-functions, by the way. All right? Now, look close. If I want to do the cosine of pi halves minus theta, if I wanted to prove this identity, and you remember, I told you, identities aren't going away after 7.3. We're going to do them over and over. If I use the difference formula for cosine, I just go the cosine of pi halves times the cosine of theta plus the cosine, whoops, plus the sine, sorry, of pi halves plus the sine of pi halves times the sine of theta. Well, we know the cosine of theta is 0 times the cosine of theta plus the sine of pi halves is 1 times the sine of theta. Well, 0 gone, and this is just sine of theta. Similarly, if I want to do the sine of pi halves minus theta, watch what happens. This is just sine pi halves cosine of theta minus cosine of pi halves sine of theta. Again, cosine of pi halves is zero, right? So this turns into one times cos theta minus zero times sine theta. Gone, and I end up with cos theta. So we can use these formulas to, to solve identities, which is really cool. But think about this. There's actually an easier way to do this. You can actually prove this sort of graphically, and I'll kind of leave that up to you. Can't I write, can I rewrite this as the cosine of negative theta minus pi halves, right? Well, the cosine of negative angles, the cosine's even, so this is equal to cosine of theta minus pi halves, which is just moving cosine to the right pi halves. Guess what that is? It's sine. You can prove it to yourself using your graphing utility. Now look at this one. How about the sine? I can rewrite this guy as the sine of negative theta minus pi halves, right? And sine is odd, so this is going to be negative sine of theta minus pi halves. So what's that say? T it says take sine, move it to the right pi halves, and then flip it. And guess what you end up with? You end up with cos theta. So that's a way of thinking. This is a way of thinking algebraically up here. This is a way of thinking graphically. I want you to be able to translate those ideas graphically, algebraically, numerically, all of those good things. All right, let's do, let's, let's go ahead and punch off one more thing, and then we're all done with this section. All right, let's do tangent of alpha plus beta. Real simple. This one's a piece of cake because I know that the tangent of alpha plus beta is just the sine of alpha plus beta divided by the cosine of alpha plus beta. All right? And I already have, I know what these are. Now, I'm going to do something clever. I'm going to leave myself a little space to be able to do this. This is sine of alpha cos of beta plus the sine of beta and the cosine of alpha. Now, I'm going to leave myself some space to do something funky. And then on the bottom, I'm going to get cos alpha uh, cos beta minus uh, sine alpha sine beta. Now remember, I can do whatever I want, sine of beta, in a fraction, as long as I multiply by 1. Well, what that really is going to amount to in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by, I'm going to just for giggles, I'm going to do cos alpha cos beta top and bottom, okay? Cos alpha, cos beta. Cos alpha, oh, I'm going to run out of room. That's all right, cos beta. Now, you may say, Ripley, why in God's name did you do that? Well, really, what I'm trying to do here is I want the equation for the tan of a sum to be in terms of tangents, okay? That's what I want it to be. I don't want it in terms of sines and coses, so we want to be able to just throw tangents in there. Now, watch what happens here. I'm going to do this kind of, in, kind of quickly. Cosine beta is cancel, right? This is a common denominator, so I get to use it in both directions. And I'm left on the left with a sine alpha over cos alpha, which is just tan alpha. Now, on the right, I'll do this with the red, that cos alpha and that cos alpha cancel, and I'm left with a sine beta over cos beta, which last I checked was tan beta. In the denominator, look, look what happens. Cos alpha, cos beta, that cancels with that, and I'm left with a 1. And then I have sine alpha, cos alpha, sine beta, cos beta, and I end up with 1 minus tangent alpha, tangent beta. That 
is what this guy equals. Similarly, I'm not going to drag you through the process. The tangent of alpha minus beta is equal to tan alpha minus tan beta over 1 plus tan alpha tan beta. Now, you may be going, Ripley, I am not going to be able to remember all these formulas. You're right. You're not going to have to. I'm, we're going to start being able to use a formula sheet. But I do want you to see where they come from. I want you to get your brain wrapped around them because you are going to have to use them. And you're going to have to be familiar with them or you'll overwhelm yourself on a test, a quiz, or a CVE. Okay? Hope you enjoyed that. Have a really good day, and I'll see you tomorrow.